Hi guys and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now today I'm going to show you how to do this absolutely stunning damask pattern all using Renshaw's fondant. I'm just going to give it a little swirl for you first just so that you can see how well the actual design goes onto the cake all the way around. I'm going to take you through everything step by step like I always do. Um, just a little tip for you first, if you do choose to do this cake, it's a very popular wedding cake that I have made. I will add some images soon, just so that you can see the actual wedding cakes. This is a cake dummy just for the purpose of this tutorial. But you will find, if you use some very deep, dark colours, they look perfect on the white canvas. They stand out so beautifully. I have chosen for this tutorial to use uh, Renshaw's Fuchsia Pink Fondant. It's my favourite, and guys, come on, it's one of my favourite colours. Um, but the deep purple, that works beautifully as well. And the turquoise, oh, you can't go wrong with the turquoise. These are all by Renshaw's. I will leave a link to the Renshaw's site in the description below. Happy baking everybody and remember if you like what you see subscribe to the channel, share the tutorial and happy baking. For the purpose of this tutorial I have covered an 8 inch round and a 6 inch round cake dummy using white Renshaw's fondant. If you are choosing to do this damask pattern, your cakes will need to be four inches deep. That's 10 centimeters. I will also put in the description on this tutorial, the rough amounts that you will need to cover an eight inch and a six inch round cake that is four inches deep, just exactly how much fondant you will need so you know how much to purchase. Now with the damask pattern, I have found personally, if you're using a white canvas, the really bold, sharp colours work the best. These are a few of my favourites by Renshaw's that I use an awful lot with my cakes. Fuchsia pink. You cannot get a pink like this making it yourself. I have tried and failed. If you have the perfect pink, let me know, but I would highly recommend Renshaw's. These deep, dark colours just look so much better and they're very easy to work with. When you make your own, and especially if you're trying to create this beautiful deep purple colour, another one of my favourites, you'll find you're using that much colour paste that the fondant becomes extremely sticky, it can split and it's very difficult to work with. Another one of my favourites is the turquoise. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using the fuchsia pink. It's my favourite colour, it's in my logo. So you pick your favourite. You'll only need one packet to cover this whole cake. We're not going to be needing much. And you're also going to need some Tylo powder. It's best to turn this fondant into modelling paste. We're not going to be adding much to it, but you'll understand why once we start. Some edible glue, icing sugar. In America, you guys tend to use corn flour, but I would recommend using icing sugar. You guys call it powdered sugar. A rolling pin, a brush. For the actual pattern, I shall hold this up first. We are using something called an onlay sheet by Marvellous Moulds. This is the damask pattern. If I just show you what comes with it, that is what will actually end up on our cake when we have finished. Now you're probably thinking, how is she going to make it even all the way around? These sheets, or should I say these sheets, sorry, have been specifically designed to fit on an even cake. When I say an even cake, four inch, six inch, eight inch, 10, 12, going up. Anything that you can divide in half exactly is an even cake. So it wouldn't work on a five inch or a seven inch or a nine inch cake. 
but these have been designed again i explained it slightly in my quilting effect tutorial it's all to do with pi the ratio mathematics the gentleman who's designed these has designed them to fit perfectly around an even sized cake i am also going to be using a pasta machine you do not have to use one however i would recommend investing in one the one i am going to be using um, i can just attach onto my kitchen aid but you can now buy they're not very expensive ones that you don't plug in and you just turn around and it makes your sheet perfectly thin to fit inside this mold so let's get started the first thing we need to do is turn whatever fondant colour you have chosen into modelling paste. So I've just taken my fuchsia pink out of the wrapper. If I just hold this to the camera, you see how stunning that colour is. This is by Renshaw's. And you just want to knead it a little bit first. And once it's quite pliable, add exactly one level teaspoon of tylo powder and simply knead this in to the fondant. And now we have our own homemade modeling paste. We now need to roll this out using the pasta machine. That's our next step. As you can see, I've already rolled out some of my fuchsia pink modeling paste. It's roughly four inches deep and now we're going to place it through the pasta machine attachment. So you want to start on level one, that's the thickest that the pasta could be, and just gently feed it through. Go to level two and feed it through again. This will make it thinner. See how it's getting longer and stretching lovely. You wouldn't be able to do this if it was still fondant. And finally, level three. We're not going to go any higher than level three. And feed it through again. It really is as simple as that. Now, obviously, I have a very big piece and we know it's modelling paste, so we need to protect some from the air. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my damask sheet as a guide, just place it on top. And I'm just going to cut off sections. So if I place that on just here now, I know it needs to be roughly that long. So just out of that one small piece of modelling paste, I've ended up with three separate pieces. As a tip, just to stop the other two from drying out, if you just place cling film or a food grade bag over the top, it will just protect those pieces whilst we work with this one. The next step is to apply our modelling paste that we've rolled out using the pasta attachment to the mould. So for this, sprinkle over some icing sugar and then tap it out. Simply lift up your sheet of modelling paste and place over your mould and then push down. Once you've pushed it down quite a fair way, you want to take your rolling pin and gently roll over the top until you can start to see the edges of the mould coming through. And that is what you are looking to achieve. All I'm going to do now, I have a Dresden tool to help me. I'm going to peel away the part of the design that I don't want. And how stunning does that look already? It's not even on the cake. Our next job is to apply this to the cake and you'll be amazed at just how simple it really is. In order to apply this to our cake, we now need to just add a small amount of edible glue. Now what you want to do, you want this part at the bottom of the cake and where the rim is that remains at the top and the distance between here and here is exactly four inches which is why you want a four inch deep cake. 
simply place your omelet mould onto your cake and just gently wrap it round. Using your fingers, just rub. You'll be able to feel where the design is just underneath, just to help it stick slightly. Once the design starts to come away, you just gently pull. Don't pull it all away at once because some of the design will need your help in just getting it out of that mould. Don't worry about this excess icing sugar. If you don't have a steamer, because you can steam it off, you can just use a brush and a little bit of water and you go over the top once the cake is finished. But what I'm going to do now really quickly is just add two more on this layer just so that you can see how perfectly they actually meet up. And then I will show you a picture of the overall cake once it's finished. So now we need to place on our next onlay sheet which I have just here. If you can see what I do, it fits beautifully into the gap. That's how you place them on. If I just turn that to more towards the camera and then you just repeat the process that you did with the first onlay sheet. There we go. Just use your Dresden tool to push the little bits on that are sticking out slightly. Remember what I said about the icing sugar. We can just steam that off or use a brush to take it off at the end. That's what we have so far now. I just want to show you how well the last piece is going to fit into the back. So again, you would take this side here where this is going to fit. You would fit it on there. There we go. And when it's all done, you see how they fit beautifully. And now we just need to add our final piece. Okay, so the final onlay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have to have it facing me just whilst I align this up. Now, all I need to do, apart from steam this cake, is also do the bottom layer. And I shall show you the finished result. And this, guys, is our finished cake. If I just give it a little swirl for you. Absolutely perfect. So come on, everybody, give it a go. I hope I've helped inspire you again today. If you like what you see, please do share this tutorial, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back very soon with more tutorials. Happy baking, everyone.